What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and this past week was a relatively quiet one, aside from Wednesday, when we got the new beta updates from Apple, and then also Friday morning, when the Apple Watch Series 7 pre-orders went live. But other than that, this was a pretty quiet week, but we're still going to discuss iOS 15, 15.0.1, and iOS 15.1 Beta 3 that was just released and introduced the new ProRes feature that we've been waiting on. And I've actually been testing that out quite a lot here on my 13 Pro Max. So we'll talk about that here in a moment. But in this video, we're going to cover some additional features and changes in iOS 15.1 Beta 3. We're going to discuss that ProRes feature and if it's worth the hype. We're gonna talk about the performance, the bugs, bug fixes, connectivity, battery life, and more. So this is gonna be our follow-up that we do every single weekend talking about the latest software updates. All right, so the first thing is the slightly different Apple Watch fully charged banner up top. So shout out to this Reddit user for posting this, but this is a new feature in 15.1 Beta 3 that I did not cover in my initial What's New video. Now also in 15.1 Beta 3, I told you guys that the set wallpaper action has been fixed in this third beta, it was broken in betas one and two. You would not be able to set a wallpaper, but there's actually a couple of other fixes as well for get clipboard and copy to clipboard. So those are two major actions and shortcuts that a lot of different shortcuts relied on, and those were broken in the first couple of betas. But now those have also been fixed here in this third beta. So it seems like a lot of shortcuts bugs are finally getting fixed here with 15.1 because a lot of people had issues on 15 and 15.0.1 as well. So it's nice to see a lot of changes coming and a lot of fixes coming to shortcuts. All right, so now let's move on to ProRes video because this is going to be the biggest feature in iOS 15.1 when it gets released, especially for, of course, iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max users. It is an exclusive feature to the 13 Pro and Pro Max. You cannot shoot ProRes natively on any other device. I saw some people commenting saying that they can shoot in ProRes on a 12 Pro. That is not the case. That's one of the exclusive features this year for the 13 Pro and Pro Max. So you can see up top, we have our little ProRes toggle right there we could turn it on and off and of course we have our max time remaining because it does take up about six gigabytes per minute so ProRes video one thing I talked about in my what's new video is the autofocus was not working but that seemed to be a bug because it has worked ever since then so I think it was something to do with the wide angle lens and when I turn macro mode off I'm not sure if it was a bug with turning that new toggle off which is also new in 15.1 if we go into our settings right here and then down to camera and then down here, auto macro, that is a new toggle there to turn the macro uh, mode off. So I like to keep that off personally, just because it kind of you know distracts you when you're taking videos and things like that. And it will lock into that macro mode when you don't want it to. So I like to keep that off until I'm actually going to be shooting macro shots and then I turn it on. However, I would like to see some type of toggle inside of the camera application. Like over here in photos, if we swipe up, we should have some type of macro mode toggle right there to turn on and off easily. So it is kind of bloated in here, but I would like to see that. But anyways, going back to the ProRes video I have been shooting this for the past couple of days and I've noticed that it really shines in low light so in regular light and you know perfect light it's honestly not a huge difference yes there's a difference ProRes is you know definitely better but it's not a huge difference until you get to low light and if you really zoom in really far and see the dynamic range so I'll probably have a video coming on ProRes to tell you guys if it's really worth using and if it's worth the hype but right now, you know, it's just still in the beginning stages. We could see some changes before 15.1 rolls out to the public. So I'm waiting on that. But it is awesome. I would definitely try it if you have a 13 Pro or Pro Max. But I don't necessarily know if it's worth taking up that much space because it is a risk. If you can offload it to an SD drive, you know, or to a computer or something like that, then it is, you know, worth it because you could delete it off your phone and you won't have all that space being taken up. But I did notice that transferring files takes a while, but it's not as bad as I've seen other people have experiences with. So I was able to transfer a four and a half minute video in about 30 minutes over AirDrop. So it wasn't terrible, but ProRes is definitely something that's going to take, you know, a lot of time to work with. They're big file sizes. They take a while to transfer. They take a while to edit things like that. But overall, I like it and I will have a lot more thoughts coming in that future video. Now, as far as other features go, I did also want to talk about conversation boost because this is a new feature that was included in the AirPods latest firmware updates and also in 15.1. So if I put my AirPods in and haptic press right here on the AirPods, or actually if I go to the hearing section right here, rather, and we go down to the bottom, 
we have conversation boost right there. And I've actually tested this in multiple scenarios when talking to somebody, and I'm not sure if it's just me, but the conversation boost actually makes me not be able to hear the person better at all. I mean, I actually think that it makes hearing the person worse and harder to hear. I even tried changing the ambient noise reduction right there and turning that up a lot, but still it just sounded like robotic and I just did not like having conversation boost on at all. So I'm hoping that's a bug and I'm hoping that's fixed in a future beta update before, you know, 15.1 releases to the public, but conversation boost seems like a pretty big gimmick to me at this point. So let me know if you guys have a different experience, but I'm not too impressed with conversation boost so far. And then also I did want to point out if you go into your settings and then go to accessibility and then down to AirPods, your AirPods right here, and then to audio accessibility settings, headphone accommodations, custom audio setup, and then we go right here to continue. If you add an audiogram, a lot of people are reporting that you should add an audiogram right here because it makes you know the sounds that come from your AirPods much better in terms of the music. You could hear you know different parts of the music that you maybe never heard before, like the instrumental. So I would definitely go ahead and do this if you have AirPods Pro. But of course, if you don't have an audiogram, just go ahead right here and don't use audiogram and go ahead and do this test because it will make your AirPods sound better. So I've noticed this, you know, over the past, you know, a couple of days since I had the firmware update installed on my AirPods and since 15.1 beta three, I've really enjoyed listening to my AirPods Pro because they just sound better now overall. And you can also change this from slight to moderate and strong. And then also I know some people ask me about the head tracking. You can turn this off from the control center on 15.1, but you cannot toggle that on or off from 15.0 or 15.0.1. You can only toggle that off in the settings. So you only get the control center toggle here to turn it off in 15.1. Now, as far as other bugs go that a lot of you guys have been mentioning in my comments and on Twitter and Instagram is number one, the touch responsiveness bug is still present in 15.1 beta three. And again, it mainly takes place inside of the YouTube application. So it seems like YouTube updates their application every single week, but there's still no fix for this touch responsiveness issue. So it seems like it might be an iOS bug so we still have not seen a fix for that here in beta 3. some people are also having the same exact bug inside of mail and other third-party applications so i'm continuing to have it in youtube and only youtube i've not had it in any other app but a lot of you guys are also having that same type of issue in other apps which leads me to believe it's an ios bug and not an app specific bug to youtube and then also a lot of people are still having issues with carplay so if you do have carplay you may still notice issues with this third beta so some people say it crashes when they attempt to play music through Apple Music or Spotify, and sometimes it just hangs and won't load up their map or won't load up any of their data. So some people say that you do need to you know, change your EQ. So if you go to your settings and then down to music and EQ and turn that off, it will resolve some issues, but a lot of people are still having issues with CarPlay. So hopefully we do see a fix for that very soon. Now, also some people are reporting issues with Siri. So some people are saying that Siri just simply does not work here in beta three. I've not had that. My Siri works just fine, but some people are saying that it heats up their device every time they ask Siri a question and sometimes Siri just doesn't respond. And then also some people are still having the issue where Siri reverts back to the default voice instead of their new Siri voice that they set inside of settings. And then also the handoff to HomePod feature is still extremely buggy here in this third beta. I use this feature every single day and it lets me down every single day. So every time I go to transfer music to a HomePod, like if I play the song right here, then tap this and switch it over to like my HomePod right here, it sometimes will just freeze up. And especially if I do the actual handoff, you know, functionality where I put my phone over it, it just hangs. And sometimes the music application will completely freeze and I have to force close out of it. So that's still really annoying and still a bug here as a 15.1 beta three. But I will say as far as connectivity goes, connectivity does seem to be better here in beta three compared to previous builds. So LTE and 5G appear to be better on my main device, which is my 13 Pro, which is also on the beta. It seems to be a little bit better on LTE and 5G, which is a good sign. But Wi-Fi connectivity, I've not had any issue with that previously, and I still don't have any issue with Wi-Fi. So I can't comment for those of you guys having Wi-Fi issues because I've not had any since iOS 15.0, like beta four or five. And as far as the performance goes, performance is excellent here in 15.1 beta three. I really don't have any complaints about the actual performance of the device, except for the handoff 
the HomePod feature, and of course the touch responsiveness issues inside of YouTube and other applications. But for me, overall performance is great. And I use this on multiple devices as well, including my iPhone 10 R the regular iPhone 13 and my iPhone 12 pro max right there. So I've used this on multiple devices and really don't have any issues on either of them. And if we go into my Geekbench right here, I did also just recently run a Geekbench test and you can see there we scored a massive 4913 on the multi-core. So really impressive results here from beta three. The single core was slightly lower, but the multi-core was much higher than the previous beta. So that's also a good sign. And as far as battery life goes, battery life feels about the same as beta one and beta two for me, which is solid, but it's really not much different from iOS 15 and 15.0.1. So unfortunately, if you still have battery drain issues, you'll probably continue to have those through beta one or through iOS 15.1. So we may not see any fix for battery drain until like 15.2, 15.3, somewhere around there. So I wouldn't get your hopes up, but again, 95% of you guys are having great battery life so far on iOS 15. So for the 5% that are not having great battery life, hopefully you will see a fix sometime relatively soon. All right, so now let's move on to what to expect next from Apple. So next week is going to be the week of the 11th, and that is when I would expect to see a fourth beta for iOS 15.1. Now this fourth beta, I would expect to have an A at the end of the build number. So that should be the final beta before the RC or the final release. So if iOS 15.1 beta four does have an A at the end of the build number next week, most likely on the 12th or the 13th, that means that the following week, the week of the 18th, we should see an RC build of 15.1 with the public release coming on the week of the 25th. So that is my guess right now. Of course, it could come earlier or it could come later. It depends on what the build numbers are and what Apple decides to do, because at the end of the day, they could change the release schedule up to whatever they want it to be. So we'll have to wait and see. That is my guess. I think we will see 15.1 on the last week of October right here, or possibly even, you know, the end of this week before last, maybe like the 20th or the 21st right there. So we'll have to wait and see. And of course I will keep you guys updated over on Twitter as well, if any new developments come about. And then as far as iOS 15.0.1, I did also wanna to touch on that really quickly because a lot of you guys are still running 15.0.1. I really don't have too much different from 15.1 to report on because a lot of the same issues that people are having in 15.0.1, people are having in 15.1 beta three and vice versa. So it's kind of just the same thing. We just have some added features here and maybe some you know other bugs in 15.1 beta three. But overall, everything seems about the same according to you guys on my community posts and just everything I've read in the comments and on social media. So that's the deal with iOS 15.0.1 versus 15.1 beta three. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is my latest follow-up video here on the latest iOS releases. Of course, we should expect to see macOS Monterey pretty soon as well, because we will probably be seeing a new Apple event and the new MacBooks coming pretty soon as well. So I'll probably have some videos coming on that very soon. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, let me know what you think about it down in those comments below. And of course, make sure you subscribe for a lot more iOS 15 coverage here on the channel. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.